All right, time for a little homework review. We have 1.1 day two. Let's start with number five. So whenever we have a variable with a number on that side, if I have negative two times x, I divide by negative two. By now we should all know that. When I divide by negative two, what happens to my inequality? It flips. Anytime you divide by a negative, it's going to flip the inequality. My answer is x is less than negative 2. Now, I don't remember whether I had to graph that or not. Let's check and find out. So it's just show solution sets on the real line. on a number line. It would look like this. Say there's zero, negative two, be an open circle, and all the ones to the left. In the interval notation, it's going to be negative infinity to negative two, with a parenthesis on both sides. Number seven, 5x minus 3 is less than or equal to 7 minus 3x. First thing I'm going to do is get my x's on the same side. And then i got to get my 3 over to the other side. It gives me 8x minus 3 is less than or equal to 7. Add the 3 over. 8x is less than or equal to 10. Divide by 8. It, x is less than or equal to 10 over 8, which reduces to 5 over 4. When I do this, it's going to be negative infinity to 5 over 4. And a bracket on the end because we had an equal sign underneath. On the number line, it would be a close dot at 5 over 4 and everything to the left. All right, number 9. 2x minus 1 half is greater than or equal to 7x plus 7, 6. Subtract the 2x over. Gives me negative 1 half greater than or equal to 5x plus 7, 6. I'm going to subtract the 7, 6 over. Whenever I do this, I need to get a common denominator, which means this is going to turn into 3 over 6, because that's 1 half. Negative 7 minus 3, that's negative 10. 6, negative 10 6 is the same as negative 5 thirds when we reduce. That's greater than or equal to 5x. Now I divide by 5. Since this is already a fraction, instead of dividing by 5, I multiply by the reciprocal of 1 ha uh, one fifth. 5's cancel. It's negative one-third greater than or equal to x. So x is less than or equal to negative one-third. And that's it. Interval notation, it's going to be negative infinity up to negative one-third. Bracket on this side. On a number line, be a closed dot and shade to the left. Number 11. All right, with this one, I can start by distributing my four-fifths to both terms, the x minus 2, and then distribute the one-third on the other side to both terms. Another way I could do this is find a multiple of 
both of these, or our greatest common denominator, and multiply the entire thing by that. So that's what I'm going to do, just for fun. 15 times 4 is 60. 60 divided by 5 is 4. No, it's not. 16, 60 divided by 5 is 12. Wow. Ridiculous. 12 times x minus 2. Over here, if I multiply the 1 third by 15, 1 third times 15 gives me 5. Now I can distribute my 12. It's going to give me 12x minus 24 is less than 5x minus 30. Subtract the 5x over, it's 7x. Add the 24 over, it's less than negative 6. Divide by 7, x is less than negative 6 sevenths. Negative infinity to negative 6 sevenths. Open parenthesis, or open dot shaded to the left. If I didn't want to multiply everything by 15 to get rid of my fractions, I could have actually multiplied that out, done 4 fifths x minus 8 fifths less than 1 third x minus 2. Subtract a 1 third over. Then I'd have to get a common denominator, which would be 15. That would give me 12 over 15x minus 5 over 15x. Add the 8 fifths to the other side. This would give me negative 10 fifths for the negative 2 plus 8 fifths. Now this is 7 fifteenths x less than negative 2 fifths. Multiply by the reciprocal here, 15 over 7. That cancels out. I'm left with x is less than, than the 5. Cancels. That gives me a 1. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 over 7. End up with the same answer. I like this method better because it's cleaner. There's less working with fractions. Gives me less of an opportunity to make mistakes. All right, onto these equalities with absolute values. Anytime you have an absolute value, you get rid of the absolute value bars and you come up with a positive and a negative solution. So number 13 is now done. Y minus 3 equals 7. Y minus 3 equals negative 7. Add the 3 to both sides, y equals 10. Add the 3 to both sides, y equals negative 4. Number 16, 1 minus t equals 1. 1 minus t equals negative 1. Subtract the 1, I get negative t equals 0. So t equals 0. Subtract the 1, negative t equals negative 2. Get rid of my negatives by dividing by or multiplying by negative 1. It gives me t equals 2. Number 17, 8 minus 3s equals 9 over 2. 8 minus 3s equals 9, negative 9 over 2. Subtract this 8 over, gives me negative 3s equals, and then I got to get a common denominator, which would be 2, so the top would become 16. 9 over 2 minus 16 over 2 gives me negative 3s equals negative 7 over 2. Multiply by the reciprocal, which is negative 1 third. gives me s equals 7 over 6. Same pattern over here. Subtract the 8.
Got to subtract 16 halves because of the common denominator. Negative 9 minus 16 gives me negative 25 over 2. Multiply by the reciprocal, which is negative 1 third. It gives me S equals 25 over 6. And that's my final answer there. Okay, that was 1.1 day 2. Let's move on to day 3. Now we're doing absolute values, values with inequalities. Whenever I get rid of my absolute value, if it's a less than, I can turn it into a compound inequality. X is less than 2 and greater than negative 2. Same thing here. Negative 1 is less than t plus 2, which is less than 1. Now I subtract 2 from everywhere. Gives me negative 3 less than t less than negative 1. Number 25 is less than or equal to, going down the same path, negative 1 is less than or equal to z over 5 minus 1 less than or equal to 1. Add 1 everywhere. This gives us 0 less than or equal to z over 5 less than or equal to 2 multiply by 5 0 is less than or equal to z less than or equal to 10 number 28 now this one's a little more difficult because I have an x in the denominator Still set it up exactly the same way. It's only going to get uh, different whenever I get rid of this 4 first. So get rid of my 4. That gives me 1. That's 2 over x. Less than 7. Now, in order to get my x on top, I'm going to flip this. So it's going to give me x over 2. But I can't just flip the middle. I have to flip the ends as well. So that's uh, 1 over 7 and just 1 over 1. So that's still 1. Now I have to multiply by 2 on all three numbers. When I flip that as well, you can't leave that part out. When you flip it, you have to change the directions of your inequalities. That was a less than, now it becomes greater than. Without that, our problem is going to be wrong. So now 2 times 1 is 2. Since that's greater than, I'm going to put it on the right-hand side. Less than x. And then 2 times 1 seventh is 2 sevenths. Number 31. Absolute value of 1 minus x is greater than 1. Now this is a greater than question, so it's an or. So it becomes 1 minus x is greater than 1, or 1 minus x is less than negative 1. Now we just solve. Subtract the 1 over. Gives me negative x is greater than 0. I have to get rid of this negative, so I have to divide by a negative 1 or multiply by negative 1. All that does is flip my inequality 
x is less than 0. Over here, subtract my 1. Gives me negative x is less than negative 2. Flip my inequality. x is greater than negative 2. Last one. First thing I do is add the one over. That would be five fifths plus two fifths. So this would be three R over five is greater than Seven fifths. Multiply by the reciprocal. Five over three. Everything cancels out on this side except the R. I have R greater than seven over three. On this side, I add my 1 over, negative 2 fifths plus 1, gives me 3R over 5, is less than, that would be uh, negative 2 fifths plus 5 fifths, which would give me 3 fifths, multiply by the reciprocal, That all cancels on both sides. I'm left with R is less than 1. All right, that's it for this homework assignment. Time for a Google Meet now. So I hope you guys uh, have a good day. Why don't we just throw a word of the day in and just call this uh, Watch Me.